Harvest Show, where faith makes a world of difference. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Thursday edition of The Harvest Show. Worship artist Hannah Kerr has shared the stage with the best in Christian music, but the singer says humility is the key to success. She joins us with some amazing music from her new CD. And the Bible says we are to be at peace with one another, but what do you do when conflict happens? We turn to the book of 1 John for answers. Plus, Brian takes a break from the news to share with us the exciting preparations for Jerusalem Day. And we want to know your thoughts. Join the conversation on Facebook and Twitter and at live at lucy.com. World News is next. With this check on World News for Thursday, May 18th, 2017, I'm Bob Nagel in for Chuck Freebie. Another 200,000 people may flee their homes as the fighting in the northern Iraqi city of Mosul intensifies, according to a United, States, a United Nations spokesman. Reports say that over 700,000 people have already been displaced from Mosul since U.S.-backed Iraqi forces launched a major operation in October to retake the city from the Islamic State group. Iraqi forces have driven the militants from Mosul, but are still battling them in densely populated western districts. The Islamic State group captured Mosul in 2014 when they swept across central Iraq. Iraqi forces have had much success in retaking the city with the help of United States air support. Fierce fighting has continued between the Syrian army and the Al Nusra Front in the southern Syrian province of Daraa, near to the Jordanian border. The pro-Syrian government military media released video on Thursday of fighting that erupted on Wednesday in neighborhoods near that city. The action included air raids conducted by Syrian jets with helicopters dropping bombs and rockets on suspected al-Nusra front posts in the residential area. The civil war in Syria has been going on for over six years, the loss of life now totaling over 400,000 dead. Despite torrential rain, protest rallies continued in Athens, Greece on Thursday for a second day, hours before a major austerity vote in Parliament that would impose additional income losses for another three years. Hundreds of pensioners marched to Parliament on Thursday chanting, no more tax theft. Their protest comes a day after a general strike disrupted services across the country. Ongoing stoppages have kept ferries tied up at port and played havoc with public transport. More pension cuts and tax hikes are needed to meet the provisions of the bailout agreement with international creditors. Security has been tightened in Israel ahead of the United States President Donald Trump's official visit there next Monday. More than 10,000 police officials will be deployed to secure Trump's visit, according to an Israeli police spokesman. Trump visits Israel on Monday after starting his trip to the region in Saudi Arabia on Saturday. On his first official trip as president, Trump is expected to stay at the King David Hotel and then visit sites around the city, including the Western Wall. A local supplier of flags has had to ramp up his production of American flags for the visit. Talks between the president and Israeli leaders should be very interesting as the American president has waffled on some stands regarding Israeli policies and positions. The first North Korean boat has arrived in the Russia's uh, Far East port city of Vladivostok on Thursday morning, kicking off a regular passenger boat service between North Korea and Russia, according to Japanese media reports. The service began as the international community condemns North Korea over its missile and nuclear programs. The boat entered the port with North Korean flags flying, docking in an early morning mist. The boat left North Korea on Wednesday to begin what will be a weekly service for passengers and cargo. The United Nations is trying to tighten sanctions against North Korea because of the ongoing development of their missile program that violates earlier agreements. And that is a check on world news for Thursday, May 18th. I'm Bob Nagel. Coming up later, Brian Bush with today's Holy Land moment. But up next, worship artist Hannah Kerr joins us to talk about her new CD, Overflow. We'll be right back after this.
We know you're working daily to make healthy choices for your life and the life of your loved ones. MHC Life is here to help you with those choices by offering supplements and materials that maximize your personal health and total well-being. This May, give the women in your life beauty from inside out. Our beauty pack will help her focus, sleep well, boost her heart health, and rejuvenate her skin. Order today for $49 and save $39 plus get free shipping. Visit MHCLife.com or call 1-800-965-2345. And to welcome back to the set of Harvest. You know, Hannah Kerr has been singing in public since the age of five. I can't remember what I was doing when I was five. But when her father himself, a worship leader, brought her to the front of the church to sing. Fast forward, and today the singer is leaving her mark on the world with a new CD that brags about the love and grace of God. Welcome to the Harvest Show, Hannah. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, five years old. Yeah. Were you just fierce? or afraid? Which one? I I mean, I was a shy kid, so I really was kind of afraid, but it felt normal because my dad was up there with me and it was kind of a family thing that we did together. So um, I just grew up singing in church. I just loved doing that. And so it kind of was a natural progression of my life to now be a singer now. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to today and I hear names like Casting Crowns and uh, what are some of the, oh, by the way, this is my colleague, Corey Mann. <laughs> He's the director of Pulse Ooh. FM radio station. And I asked him to come on with me as we talk with Hannah. Kind of share your backstory with us. Yeah, so I, at the age of five, started singing at church. My parents were worship leaders my whole life. And so I really grew up in the church. I grew up loving Christian music and Christian radio. And so that's really where I first fell in love with the Lord is just through mm. worship music. and. So I started singing in church, and then we moved to Nashville when I was 14. And that move was kind of what changed everything for me. It really brought me out of my comfort zone. I kind of had to be not shy anymore. I had to be who I was. And so I started singing at church on my own without my dad there. And I started stepping outside my comfort zone in that way. And so I made an album. Um, Now I'm working with awesome people that I love and people that I've looked up to my whole life. So... It's just, it's been really cool and all the glory to the Lord for everything that's been happening. I just am so grateful. It's been so fun. Your first concert, your first yes. big go to a show with your parents, you're six years old, mm-hmm. and who was it? Casting Crowns. Great, huge band at the oh, time. Yeah. They're, oh, yeah. they're, they're kind of, st- I think probably about the time they're starting off and they're, they're uh, doing amazing things. Fast forward to, you took some time off of college, yeah. a whole semester to go tour with Casting crowns, I know. How about that? It's I crazy. Know. And it's you're crazy. you're you're at the beginning of your career, and yeah. you're singing in front of seven, eight thousand people every night. It's crazy. A I, band that you saw when you were six. Yeah. What was that like? It was incredible. Every night, I just felt like I would step on stage and have to pinch myself and ask, "Is this really happening? Is this really what my life is right now?" I was just so grateful every night. There was not a single concert that went by that I took it for granted. I just. I knew that I'm a new artist and really I don't deserve that platform yet, but for some reason the Lord has given it to me. And so it was so cool. It really was. I just soaked it all in for the 40 shows that we had together. It was so great. 40 shows. You know, Hannah, just like you said, you felt like you did not deserve that platform. Mm. There are people who get to that platform through a lot of hurt, pain, and tears. Where do the lyrics come for you? The lyrics always come from the inspiration of God for me. I... I never am just writing things that I just feel. I always want to write things that are true, Mm -hmm. things that are backed by scripture. Um, I always want to start off with either a verse that I've been reading or whether it's God revealing it through prayer that way too. I just always want it to be grounded in scripture and grounded in what God actually says, not just how I'm feeling at that moment. Um, So really just inspiration comes hopefully from God himself. And um, that's just so cool to me that the creator of the universe would provide inspiration for us to share with others and a message that hopefully inspires them and empowers them. So your project is called Overflow. Yes, ma'am. Why? So when I was praying through my album and just really asking God, what is it that you want me to say? You know, I'm 20. It's not that I have all the wisdom in the world, but just show me what you want me to say. Show me how you want me to be as an artist. And I just really felt like God was saying, Hannah, if you ask me for wisdom, I give that freely to all who ask. And so I just kept asking God to pour into me so much so that God doesn't just fill us up till we're full. He fills us up so that we overflow into the lives of all the people that we come into contact with. And so all these songs to me really are just Lord, pour into me your grace and your peace and your truth so that I can pour that into all the people that will listen to the music that I've created. 
And so, yeah, that's just my prayer for the album, just that all the things that God has taught me would overflow into the lives of others. Let's talk about Warrior, Undivided, some of the cuts on the piece. Sure. So Warrior is the first song on the album, and I really wanted it to be first because I wanted that to be the first thing people heard from me. Warrior is a song of empowerment. It kind of says, you know, I'm staring down the face of fear, but I know that I have to just keep going. I know that I can keep the hope alive if I look to the Lord in times of trouble. And so I wanted that to be a song of encouragement and empowerment because we all go through hard times. We all go through times when we think, I can't go on. That, that's it. But the Lord promises that he'll be with us when we fight through things like that. And so that was really my prayer, was just warrior first. I want people to be encouraged. Um, there's other songs in there like Radiate. It's a really fun, upbeat song. Just kind of talking about how God can make beauty out of ashes. He can make a future out of a past that may seem like it can't be redeemed. Mm. The Lord's light is greater than all darkness. And so Radiate's just, you know, a, a testament of God's glory, a testament of how, you know, we may not be perfect people, but the Lord is perfect and he can use all things for his glory. And so I really, I love those two songs. If you're going to listen to two, I would listen to those. <laughs> when you're on the road with a Mark Hall from Casting Crowns, who's been doing this for a while, or you're in a writing room with a Matt Marr, uh, hopefully they're pouring wisdom into you. Yeah. Do you remember something specific that Mark told you while you guys were on the road that kind of uh, poured into you and you're like, you know what, I'm going to remember that for a long time? Yeah. So Mark Hall is kind of one of those people, he's a youth pastor. And so... Yeah. You know, his main thing is I want to show you what it looks like to be, you know, X, Y, Z. And so instead of really telling me a lot of things, I would just watch his behavior. I would just watch how he treated people. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing about Mark is that he never walks by someone without investing in them. Whether it's a security guard or a merch volunteer or a snack shop person, he walks by, he says, hi, I'm Mark. What's your name? What's your story? Wow. And he always invests in them. And that was something that I'll never forget because... It can be easy to get in a routine and just say, okay, I'm on stage tonight, that's what I'm doing, I'm singing. But it's so much greater than just singing. Christian music is so much greater than just music. And Mark really has that in perspective. He really understands, like, this is a ministry. All that we're doing today, from the time we get off the bus to the time we get back on again, it's a ministry. And so he really brings church on the road in that way. He's just so welcoming, mm -hmm. he's so loving. Um, just really invest in people. So that's something that I want to do for sure. Well, Hannah, thanks for stopping by and sharing your music with us. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me this morning. Okay. To connect with Hannah, go to hannahkerrmusic.com, the Harvest Show Facebook page, or harvest-tv.com for a link to her new project. It's called Overflow. Harvest continues in just a moment. Got Facebook? Follow The Harvest Show. Comment and share your opinions on current events. See new after the show guest interviews. Watch my updates and inspiration from Israel exclusively for Facebook. Facebook.com slash The Harvest Show. Like us today. Keep breathing when the negative is all you hear. Gotta keep believing in the dark. There is a light, truth that keeps on burning bright. Brave enough to fight the fight, shout the battle cry. You'll never stop me. I'm a warrior. When I fall down, I get stronger. Oh, 
praise you in this storm, and I will lift my hands. You are Jesus, you alone are worthy of. Dear friend of mine, named Rich Mullins. My dear deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. When Jesus gave his great commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, he was not just speaking to his disciples, he was speaking to you and me. Through the outreaches of the Sea Broadcasting's television, shortwave radio, free Bible distribution, and prayer line, souls come to faith and are saved every day. As a financial partner with the Sea Broadcasting, you too will be investing into the lives of men, women, and children as we proclaim God's word around the world together. LaCie Broadcasting Partners in Faith make it possible for millions to hear the Word of God in over 190 countries. You can be a partner in faith with us for as little as a monthly gift of $25. Your gifts help LaCie Broadcasting bring life, hope, and love into a dark world. Call 1-800-365-3732 and tell the prayer operator you want to be a partner in faith. That's 1-800-365-3732. Be a part of the Great Commission. Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Brian here at the foot of the old city walls of Jerusalem. This is the venue where the city of Jerusalem, the state of Israel, are going to have a lot of celebrations as it commemorates its 50th anniversary of the reunification of Jerusalem. That is to say, West Jerusalem and East Jerusalem. And these walls are gonna become the projector screens for a presentation outlining history and hope of the city's inhabitants and in particular the Jewish residents of Israel. You can look down here, <laughs> we've got complete standstill. That's been the case in point for several days and it's gonna continue to be that way. But I wanna show you some of the exciting things that are taking place. All this gear and everything that's been laid out for these preparations. Every night we hear the music and we see the lights that are being rehearsed for this great event. And then as we work our way over here, you can kind of spin around with me. You can see some of the things that are going on. We've got a stage set up here. We've got another main stage set up here with the lights on top of the city wall as well. And behind me across the valley here you can see some of the grandstands that have been set up this stage here as well a secondary stage and the sound system goes all the way down the main streets and all the way up to the municipality behind me they're expecting a whole lot of people to be present so friends i hope you like that little glimpse into what's happening you folks have a great weekend bye bye now Well, on Tuesday, I started a two-part series entitled, When You Are at War. And we're talking about the conflict that we have with others and really what we can do about it. We're using words from the epistle of James, where he said in chapter 4, verse 1, he said, From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lusts that war in your members. Now, the first thing that I told you on Tuesday was that people at war with others are first at war with themselves. The second thought I want to share is this. People at war with others really are at war with God. Now, I know that's a strong statement, but think about this. When God created man, he created him to have perfect harmony, perfect unity with God. God and man lived in this spiritual perfection until sin came into the picture. And when sin came, when rebellion came, division and conflict came right behind it. Now suddenly there was strife not only between God and man, but strife came into man's own family. Realize that Cain killed his brother Abel. 
because Adam and Eve walked in disobedience to God. Now, I know that's a very strong thing to think about, but consider this. John teaches in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 20, if a man says, I love God and hates his brother, guess what? He's a liar because he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? You see, friend, the key to you getting along with others, it's to make sure that you're getting along with God. And what I found in almost every relationship is that the key to growing closer to each other is really for each person in that relationship to individually grow closer to God. And then as each of you grow closer to God, guess what? You will grow closer to each other. You see, that's why secular counseling and psychology, that's why it doesn't work because it leaves God out of the picture. And again, James gives us this instruction in, in, in the fourth chapter and the seventh verse. He said, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Then you can resist the devil and he will flee from you. And I believe there, there's those watching right now. You find yourself in a very serious relational conflict with another person. And I believe the Holy Spirit is dealing with you that the problem may not be that other person, but it may be that you spiritually are in the place with God where you should not be. And it's time for you to come to the place where you submit to God today. Submit to His will. Submit to His plan for your life. And then you will find that relational conflict that you're in, it will subside. The peace of God will take over. And when the peace of God takes over, then you will be at peace with others. And if you're in that position, again, I want you to call prayer line. Somebody is standing by to help you come into that right relationship with God. It's time to call a ceasefire. Get out of that relational war that you're in and start it by submitting to God. Make things right with Him. And I guarantee you're going to begin seeing things made right with others as well. We have a number of ways in which you can reach us for prayer. You can start by calling 1-800-365-3732. Send your prayer requests through email at prayer at lacy.com, worldharvest.com, and 61300 Ironwood Road, South Bend, Indiana, 46614. And joining me today on set is Pastor Charles. You know he's the director of the International Prayer Line here at Lacey Broadcasting. What do you have for us today, Pastor? Prayer requests. Okay. Prayer requests. We, we get them all the time, and you know it, thousands a month. And we get them uh, uh, quite often also, uh, Valerie, from our partners. Okay. Those ones who come alongside yes. of us on a monthly basis and financially support Lacey. Uh, for instance, we've got Jay and Sarah. Jay and Sarah says, please pray with us that we be blessed to sell our house. And... Watch this. Use the proceeds to advance the kingdom of God. They say we are determined to fulfill wow. God's purpose in our lives. Amen. Yeah, yeah. And so, and then Paul, Paul says, I am standing in the gap for a co-worker, and I'm asking you to stand with me. I'm asking God to heal him of terminal cancer. You know, I think the greatest honor that we can bestow upon someone is to pray for them. I'm telling as you. As a Christian. So yeah. would you do that for oh, us? Oh, of course. Father in heaven, we just thank you today for those ones who do indeed come alongside of us, Lord, who support us, Lord God, not only in prayer, but also in finances. And we're asking you today, Lord God, to move on their behalf. Father, we know what Jay and Sarah is asking us, Lord, pertaining to the sales of their house, and what Paul is asking us pertaining to healing for his friend. We're asking you, Lord God, to touch them in a special way. Let them know that the Most High has moved on their behalf, and we will continue to praise and honor you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Amen to that. And remember, we need your pictures. We need you to send them in to us so that we can put them on the wall of love upstairs in the Lacey Broadcasting Chapel. Pastor Charles will go upstairs along with the intercessors and pray for you. And it's just really a point of contact. I, I, Pastor Charles, I don't think my picture is up there. I think I need to put my <laughs> picture up there. <laughs> so, so send that those pictures in to us. Also, we'd like to wish the Harvest Show production assistant, Matthew Kowalski, a belated Happy birthday, happy birthday, Matt. I'm going to have one of your donuts just as sure as soon as the show is over. And remember, if you need prayer, 1-800-365-3732. Thank you so much for joining us here on The Harvest Show today. We'll see you again later. What if I 
I told you that there's a place full of loved ones' photos that gets prayed for regularly? Prayer offers a direct line to God, so who couldn't use a little more of it? Getting yourself or your loved ones on this wall is as easy as click and send. The chapel at Lacey Prayer Line has a wall of love that's waiting to be filled up. Just email your pictures to prayer at lacey.com. That's it. Our chapel has been a focal point for prayer for the last 18 years. Let our prayer team pray for you. Hi, this is Stefan Radulich with Feed the Hungry, and I want to encourage you to become a Full Life Monthly Partner today. Why is that so important? Well, because children like these children at the Kiriandongo Refugee Camp come to school every day for a hot meal. For all of these kids, this is the best meal they're going to have. For many of them, it might be the only meal that they have on a given day of any month. Because of your monthly support, we can make a monthly commitment to schools like this. It takes $6 a month to take care of one child, so maybe today you can make that $6 a month commitment, or 12 or 18 or maybe you can make a commitment of $30 or $60. And for doing that, I want to say thank you and God bless you. Please act now. These children need your encouragement. They need to know they are not alone. Please call 1-877-769-9270 or visit feedthehungry.org to help a child know how good a full life feels. We're 